Welcome to the Raven Space on YouTube. My name is Jason, and this is Raven Space Daily, where we talk about Baltimore Ravens news every single weekday. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the Raven Space for more great Baltimore Ravens content. Uh, also, I want to thank all the Patreon subscribers for supporting the show. Uh, if you're not a Patreon subscriber, go check it out, and we'll hop right in to the news of the day. And the first news story comes from ESPN where they rank every single team's roster using Pro Football Focus. If you guys don't know, Pro Football Focus gives you rankings for every player for the year. Um, and if you guys ever want to see me, you know, put those rankings out so y'all can see them. I can do that. I am a Pro Football Focus member. I pay the fee uh, so you guys will be able to see that, similar to how ESPN did it. We'll go through the Baltimore Ravens rankings, and they're ranked number 19 in the league. And their blurbs here, and I'll read you guys uh, the blurbs that they have. And I'll read you guys the blurb that they have here for the biggest strength and the biggest weakness. So again, right now the Ravens are ranked number 19. And the biggest strength for the Ravens is Marshall Yonda. Marshall Yonda is the league's best guard and might be the best overall offensive lineman. He switched from right to left guard midway through last season and didn't skip a beat, allowing just six total pressures. And we all know how good Marshall Yonda is. In my opinion, he is the best uh offensive lineman in the league um there's only one player i think that might have that uh that chance to beat him and that's tyron smith in dallas um and then for the biggest weakness i'll be ready guys because i've told you guys this the ravens top weakness might be the player lining up next to yonder right tackle james hurst though he didn't give up a sack and 305 snaps last season he allowed 14 total pressures and has consistently graded poorly as both a run and pass block. So again, and I know like a lot of people sometimes don't trust pro football focus. I trust them. Um, I really hope that they say what they do. They have people scout and scout again and then professionals grade and all that stuff. So, but James Hurst is the biggest weakness, which is scary. Um, and I know the Ravens have confidence in James, but I just do not. So you guys can see why I personally am a little afraid about James Hurst. But again, um, the Ravens have to improve and be better. Now, you do have to add in the new pieces that we have. Um, when we did lose Tavon Young, that's gonna hurt us though. But I think the Ravens can be better than 19. Um, I'll read you guys the names of the teams in front of us so you guys can have a sense if you think we're better than them or not. So one is the Chicago Bears, number 18. Number 17 is the Redskins. And number 16 is the Giants. So I think we're better than the, the Bears, for sure. You can make arguments about the Redskins and the Giants um, either way, especially the Giants, because they have a once-in-a-lifetime talent, Odell Beckham. And when you have one of those talents, you're going to be okay. And then you have also a great safety and Landry on the other side that can match Weddle's uh, numbers as well. So, but here you guys can see what people think of the Ravens based on Pro Football Focus's metrics. And again, if you guys want me to do any more things for Pro Football Focus so you can see some of our graded players, let me know and I'll make a video about that. So the next story comes from the Bleacher Report and it talks about the most underpaid and overpaid player for each team. And I was surprised for the Baltimore Ravens one that was the most overpaid um, and the most overpaid player for the Baltimore Ravens is Terrell Suggs. And I was surprised because uh, he only makes $4 million. But I'll read you guys what the Bleacher Report said about it. Outside linebacker Terrell Suggs was still impressively effective at his age in 2016, a season when the 34-year-old recorded eight sacks and 35 tackles. But he'll turn 35 midway through the 2017 season and has torn his Achilles twice. The end can come abruptly when the NFL has punished a physically violent player like Suggs for 14 years. And a lot of this isn't fair for this one because they're kind of projecting a little bit, um, as you guys can tell. So they're projecting that Terrell Suggs is going to fall off. And then if he does fall off, he'll be the most um, underpaid. But he played well, played a, better than the other players we have on the roster at that position. So I don't think he's overpaid. I think that's over-exaggerating the situation. Um, I think he is paid perfectly fine. Um, in my opinion, I think last year you could say that Darius Webb was overpaid even though he was a great safety um you know he still get paid a lot of money I think he's getting paid cornerback money and the most underpaid player is CJ Mosley who's is coming in at 1.6 million dollars this year which is crazy I can't imagine CJ Mosley who in my mind is the best defensive player on the Ravens is only getting paid 1.6 million. Uh, I'll read you guys the blurb. CD Mosley is one of the NFL's most promising young inside linebackers. 
He has the speed and instincts to thrive against both the run and pass. He recorded 342 tackles over 46 regular season games, an average of 7.4 per game. The 25-year-old also snatched four interceptions in 2016. He'll get his payday soon. For now, the Ravens will keep soaking up Moses' Pro Bowl caliber production at a dollar store price. And this is, and this is the beauty of drafting uh, your talent, and not buying your talent. And we see this with teams like the Patriots, and we see this with teams like uh, the Packers, where they get these players to come in and they perform for them, but you get them to perform at a rate of 1.6, like like C.J. Mosley. Again, I agree with that 100%. If C.J. Mosley is only getting paid 1.6 million. I think not only is he the most underpaid player on the Ravens, he may be the most underpaid player in the league other than Odell Beckham. And let me know who you guys think is the most overpaid and underpaid player in the league. I kind of know who you guys are going to say for overpaid, but we'll, you may surprise me. And the third topic of the day comes from the Bleacher Report as well, where they rank each division. As you guys know, the Ravens are in the AFC North with the Bengals, the Browns, and the Steelers. And we sometimes even send three teams to the playoffs, right? So I'll read you guys, you know, a little bit of the blurbage here, but they have the AFC North rank at number six this year. And the title is The Unpredictables. And I do see what they're saying. The Bengals, if they jump back, they can make the playoffs. The Steelers are predicted to make the playoffs. And the Ravens, if they jump back, if, and the Ravens, if we jump back, can make the playoffs. The Browns really can't. Um, but I do think that there's some truth into what they're saying. They're only projecting one team to make it. Um, and I can see that being true. It most likely it will be true. But number six is harsh. I mean, especially coming from the background that you know, I come from and you guys come from where the AFC North was always the toughest division from about 2002 uh, up to maybe 2012, 2013, 14, where, you know, either the Ravens and the Steelers were good, the, the Steelers or the Bengals were good, the Ravens or the Bengals were good, or all three teams were good. To be number six is kind of hard. Of course, teams have ups and downs, but number six is where they're ranking the AFC North. Um, which, you know, isn't good for us. So, and like we do at the end of every single Raven Space Daily, we have a question from you guys um, for our mailbag. And this question comes from Ethan Nelson. And Ethan asks, do you see either Tyler Farrow or Ricky Ortiz emerging as the fullback? If Tyler Farrow emerges, how do you think he'll be used? Thank you so much for your question, Ethan. And it sounds like to me, you mostly care about the Tyler Farrow information. Um, but just to answer the first question, I do see Ricky Ortiz winning, so I do see it happening that way. If the Ravens choose Talaferro, there's a difference from being a fullback in training camp and being a fullback that's trying to lead block against Khalil Mack. Um, and I think that if Talaferro is the guy, power running is just out of the question, I think. It's hard to, when you're a player and you're trained one way, especially as a running back where you're trained to, you know, hit with your shoulder, to change to a blocking stance, right? and seal right running backs don't seal when they hit people with their shoulder so i think it's going to be hard for that to happen i don't know i hope it's not tyler farrow now if we do use him he'll be used like use check um except for more uh dynamic right because he's faster than use check i believe um and even though he can't catch as well when i use the word dynamic i mean that he'll he'll be used to run the ball you know in third down situations you know he he won't be a blocker Right, use check was a blocker, you know. He, and this, you know, he's a fullback, and so we'll see. Um, I don't think, you know, I don't think Tyler Farrell will win, but if he does, then he'll be used as a running back slash fullback, um, and you'll see a lot of different formations with him. Um, and it will kind of even be like the Ravens don't even carry a fullback. Thank you so much for your question, Ethan. And that's the show for today. I want to thank our Patreon subscribers one more time because you guys help us make this show. I want to say, please subscribe to the Raven Space on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, follow us on our different social media channels. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow here on the Raven Space on YouTube. Thank you so much and go Ravens.